chapter 15, the book of Matthew. Jesus said in verse 8, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now I'm going to show you the part of the shortest sermon that's ever been preached. Jesus, Jesus even went to the trouble to call a bunch of people around, call a multitude of people. Verse 10 says, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Now listen closely. Jesus said to them, Hear and understand. Verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. He turns around and walks off. Whatever shape and condition that you sit in that seat tonight, sitting there looking at me, that's exactly what you said yesterday. I don't mean yesterday, Thursday. I mean yesterday, your past life. It's a way of life with you. Now, uh, take inventory of that. If you're broke in your pocketbook, if you're sick in your body, if you're confused in your mind, if you're in trouble and you know you are, you're living in the result of what your mouth said yesterday. Tonight, if you make up your mind, you can change and start tonight on the road of victory. The road of victory. Everybody say victory. victory. You got to start sometime. You might as well start. And when you start getting on the road of victory and you change your mouth, the whole world was framed by words that comes out of the mouth of God. Well, that's the same as you. You're not different from God. Your whole world is framed by words that comes out of your mouth. Your whole world is framed by that. My world is not framed by words that comes out of your mouth. It's framed by words that comes out of my mouth. That's the reason a lot of ministers has to beg for money all the time, continually, 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 continually. Because about half of their ministry is flaky. It's good, maybe a good ministry, but God didn't tell them to get into it. They just got into it because they wanted to, you know. Well, I can't go around the country. I can see a lot of ministries I don't have that's good, but God hadn't called me to do that. You understand? God hadn't called me to. Do what God's called you to do. So well, I don't know what God's called me to do. Well, start doing the little things for God. You'll find out what God will call you to do. God, you, God will never mold you into the person he wants you to be until you start getting to the ministry of helps and the ministry of giving in your own church. Do you understand that? You have to, God has to trust you in the little things first. He's not going to trust you with big things. God's not going to give you a whole orphanage full of kids to feed, and yet because you don't have enough faith to feed them. I mean, you probably don't even feed one, much less a whole orphanage full. God's not going to give you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of bills to meet. If he'd give me that responsibility 20 years ago, I could have done it. There's no way I could have done it. He, had to, he has to train me. He has to train you as you go along. Faith is built like a house. He can give it to me now. In fact, I told him last year, I said, Lord, I wish you would. I said, I think my faith is this strong. I said, I think it is, Jesus. I wish you'd let me start a new church for you or build a new church for you every year for the rest of my life. I said, God, I've got enough faith to get money for you to build a new church with and pay for it every year, at least one a year. And I just, bought a, I just bought a Jewish synagogue in Daytona Beach and paid cash for it. I paid cash for it. Now I've already got more money accumulating than I could do that 
And I said, I believe. I said, Lord, I believe, that, I believe that my faith is strong enough to build a new sanctuary for you. I'm not a pastor. I said, I'll just buy them and pay for them and let somebody else pastor my Bible school students or something, you know. If you show me where they're at, what you want me to do? I, but I asked him, I said, Lord, because I prayed all night, Christmas Eve night, all night long. I prayed all night, Christmas Eve night. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord Jesus, uh, I was reading my Bible, see, about 11.30 that night with my pajamas on, and I just, I was by myself, and I was reading the Bible, I, here come, God just came in my room and just filled my room full of his presence, and I broke and began to weep, so I started praying in tongues. 15 or 6 the next morning, Christmas morning, I was still praying in tongues. Never had been to sleep, and I wasn't even tired. Glory to God forever. You don't do, do, do that every night, but it just happened to me. It's one of those things that happened to me all of a sudden. I didn't know I was going to pray all night. When I picked up my Bible and started reading it, I didn't know I was going to pray all night. But the Spirit of God moved in on me so strong, I just started praying. And I got into a realm of prayer in His presence. It got so sweet, I just kept praying. Prayed all night. Fifty to six the next morning. Glory to God. And I felt so good the next morning. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. I said, God, I'll do anything you want me to do. I said, God, I'm, I'm, I'm shape enough now. I've still got some of my businesses, Lord. And I said, I don't have to have an offering, Lord, to, to go somewhere for you. I said, wherever I go, they always bless me with gifts to keep up my ministries, you know, and have an unbed mother's home and feed the poor kids and so forth, you know, feed the little orphan kids and things like that. I said, but Jesus, I'll go, I'll go to Paris, France for you if you want me to and buy my own plane ticket, and I'll just go pray for one person. If you know a demon possessed person somewhere, you want me to go pray for? I said, I don't care what that. If you'll tell me where it is, I'll go do it. I just want you to know, Jesus, my life belongs to you. I don't want to live no flaky life, you know. I said, my life belongs to you. And I, I, I believe that my faith is strong enough to build a church for you one, one a year for the rest of my life. But I sure could have done it years ago, but you have to get your faith. But I can speak it into existence. Glory to God forever. You have to speak everything into existence if you just knew that. God works with your words. The Holy Spirit works with your words. And if you speak words of victory, God will work to bring you victory. If you don't speak words of victory, then you'll, there's a power that will take those words and work, they'll be working against you to damn you. Don't never tell anybody you're sick. Oh, I'm sick. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. I know you are, honey. You said that right, you are. Start to request prayer and things like that. But I mean, don't, don't, don't call yourself sick. Don't call yourself broke. Don't call yourself weak. Don't call yourself sad. Don't call yourself lonely. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Lord said, those that are weak, let them say they are strong. Well, know this, that works the same way for everything. Those that are sick, let them say they are well by the stripes of Jesus. Have scripture in there when you're confessing something. Make sure you got, don't just go around confessing things. You have to have scripture for it, my brother and sister. Those that are sad, let them say, I have joy unspeakable and full of glory and it won't be long till it come to him I have joy you say oh, some sad days but no. well, don't accept sad days if a sad spirit so you get a hold of you someday and you're going to have a day that's down and not up just say I bind you Satan in Jesus name and I command all confusing spirit go from me the joy of the Lord is mine thank you Lord because the joy of the Lord is mine the joy of the Lord is mine I said the joy of the Lord is mine Jesus, the joy of the Lord is mine. The joy of the Lord is mine. Do you feel like dancing? No, you make yourself dance. Do you feel like saying the joy of the Lord is mine? No, you make yourself say it. Jesus said the word that comes out of you will either give you victory or defile you or destroy you. They'll give you victory or they'll destroy you. Words that comes out of you. See, if you will confess victory that God has promised you in the Bible, if you will confess that, if you will confess that, the Holy Spirit will take those words and he'll get God in the picture 
and God will begin to work in your life. You don't have to feel God for him to work in your life. You've got to be kidding if you believe that. You just claim what's rightfully yours in Jesus' name because you're a born-again, blood-bought Christian and your name is in heaven, bless God forever. And with authority, God said, God said, come before the throne of God with boldness, not if you feel like it. Well, I don't feel like going before the throne of God today in boldness. I feel sad and I want to call up my neighbors and tell them and I want to wallow around in my sad, deep feelings. But Brother Norville, the Lord knows my heart. I said, I know it, honey. He knows your mind, too, and he knows you're stupid. <laughs> oh, Brother Norva, you, <laughs> you, <laughs> I never had nobody talk to me like you do. <laughs> I said, but you're going to get victory before I leave this house. I'm not going to leave you having a pity party in the, the world of sadness. Jack out of there and jerk him up with the, from the chair and says, let's walk and walk and sing a song together. Run around the house if you have to. Run, I said. <laughs> they go, hoo, hoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make three or four trips. Do you feel any better? A little bit. Let's go. Time to get through, they're shouting. I've took people that was totally dying, and I mean no hope for them, man, and took them by their hand and just march. I mean hours, march. Jesus' name, you're healed. Jesus' name, you're healed. And all of a sudden, God's power would hit them in the middle of the floor and heal them right in front of me, and they'd run off. You know, if you walk the floor long enough and confess with your mouth that Jesus is your healer, that he'll come and heal you? Amen. Oh, he will. He'll come and heal you. I guarantee he'll come and heal you. Whatever you call Jesus, if it's scriptural, he'll become that to you. If you have a person in your family that dies, leaving a lonely spot, start calling, if it's a brother, start calling Jesus. Lord, you are the best brother that a person ever had. You are the best brother that a person ever had. And he'll fill that empty spot. Amen. I guarantee you he'll fill that empty spot. Jesus said those words that comes out of you will defile you. It's not the words that goes into you that destroys a man. It's the words that comes out of you that destroys a man. Your world is totally framed by the words that you say. Your world is framed, my brother and sister. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. <clears throat> All right, turn with me to Mark chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Blessed be his holy name. <clears throat> How do you look towards Jesus for your children? Did you know you can get a healing for your own children? Somebody else is there. They're, they're responsible. Every parent is responsible for their own children. Notice chapter 5, verse 22. Notice now the words that comes out of a person's mouth and how the Lord Jesus responds. And behold, I cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now that's the first thing. Remember what Wayne told you last night? I tell people like that all the time. Come and bow down before God and you'll find great favor with God. It's called humbling yourself before the Lord. The Bible said, He that humbles himself before God finds great favor with God. First time he fell at his feet, verse 23, and besought him greatly saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now you might ask yourself a question, why did God find so much favor in that statement? Because the man came and hunted him down. First of all, he bowed down before God, and then he said with his mouth, when he, when he said, come and lay thy hands on her, see, laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. Every time you obey a doctrine of the church, you please God big. 
Everybody say big. big. See, I said every time that you obey a doctrine of the church, that God said in the doctrine of the church, you please God big. And laying on of hands is a doctrine of the church. God said for you to lay hands on people. The last 11 words that Jesus spoke on the earth before he went back to heaven, up to the air, in the book of Mark, he said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Whoosh! Up to the air. And all of a sudden, a couple of men appeared in white apparel standing there and told the people, what are you standing here gazing up to him for? It'll be just like he said. Everything you said, that's the way it'll be. He will come again, just like he said. In other words, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Everything he said, that's what he'll do. And he'll pray to the Father, another comfort will come. Just exactly like he said, honey, it won't be no difference. Just exactly like he said. You don't have to hunt and dig for victory. Just believe what Jesus said, and you'll get victory. It'll be yours. It's all for free. Make up your mind that he knows everything, and you don't know anything. Says what he tells you. Say what he tells you to say, and victory will be yours. Lay thy hands on my daughter, and she shall live, and she's at the point of death. Well, as you know, Jesus went with him, and she died while they're on the way. And the Lord said, that's okay, so she just, she's sleeping, she's not dead. Now, you said, no, that's a Florida lie. That, that is a lie. If I ever heard one of my life, people tell me, it says, now, now, she was already dead before the man ever left the house. Then Jesus said, she's not dead. I said, well, that's right. She wasn't dead. Yeah, but people says, no, but she was dead. The man said, don't bother the master no more. She was dead. She's dead. Don't bother him no more. But Jesus said that she's not dead. She sleepeth. But she was dead. Well, you say, is that a telling a lie? Well, it's telling a Florida lie. If you're a natural person living in the natural world, it would be a natural lie in the courtroom that would be a lie. But you have to understand this. When you got born again by the Spirit of God, your name was written in heaven. And in heaven, there is no death. In heaven, there is no sickness. And Jesus came from heaven, and he was speaking eternal things. He doesn't speak flashly things. He speaks eternal things. And see, where he come from, see, there is no death. And he knew that he knew that he'd raise her from, that he'd raise her from the death of flesh. But see, and also Romans four seventeen, you have to understand with your mouth, you have a right to call those things that be not as though they were. We sponsor a black boy over in Africa. missionary that has several churches. He preaches to all of his churches once a month. He has a bunch of little teeny churches that he started, little teeny churches. When they all come together on a Sunday afternoon once a month, he has about 1,600 people. But he's got several churches. I said, son, how'd you get saved? No, you're not ready for this. Now, here's a little black boy in Africa with no money. None. Africa, that's a long ways off. He said, well, Brother Norville, I was going to this church. I would got saved and given my life to Jesus. And I'd heard about Christ for the nations in America, a place where 
kids can come from different nations of the world and study about God. I'd heard about Christ for the nations. He said there was a new convert in our church. He said, of course, we got people saved all the time. He said, I was just a teenager. Like he's like 16 or 17. In the church. But I'd gotten saved and given my life to the Lord. And he said, this man and his little boy would walk to church. They lived about five miles away from the church. They walked to church. The little boy would even sing songs for Jesus. He was seven years old. The little teeny boy was seven years old. He'd get up and sing. He'd sing songs for Jesus and tell people about Jesus. Seven years old. I don't know. Something happened one Sunday that the man came by himself, walked five miles to church. He was a new convert himself. Just been saved a few months. Not very long. And a man walked five miles to the church come in during church service and walked over to him in church service and said to him, Mr. So-and-so, I come to tell you that your little boy, seven years old, is dead. Something happened. He died. <laughs> he was in the hospital when I left, but they'd already, they'd already pronounced him dead. The undertaker was coming to get him. So he gets up. This young boy said, I saw the man. Get up and announced to the church. He said, Pastor, can I interrupt you? This man's come from my village, and he says that my little son, seven years old, is dead. You know, the one that comes to church here with me? He said, y'all will preach all the time about Jesus raising people from the dead. He said, I want to pray until God comes. Now, this is the Father speaking. You understand that? That's the reason things like that happen, because this is the Father speaking, not a bunch of Christians speaking and without, the, without the parents. The parents, the parents, the parents, the parents needs to lead the group. The parents needs to want it. God does the work, but the parents needs to want it. And the father said, you're preaching to this Jesus about raising from the dead. And he'll do anything for people that he loves them. Well, I know he loves my little boy because my little boy sings to him all the time. He said, do you fellows believe what you preach? And the pastor said, yes, we do. He said, well, do you mind if some of the elders of the church and some of us men go and pray and walk to my village and pray for my son. God would raise him from the dead. The pastor said, well, that'd be all right. Do you want to do that? He said, yeah. He said, well, you're the father. We'll go along with you. Do you want us to do that? He said, yeah, I want you to do it. And I'll go with you and pray. So they picked five men. I mean, they picked four men. And this young 17-year-old kid, he asked him if he could go with them. And he says, oh, yeah. So they walked five miles to that town. Well, my, by the time they got there, the little boy's body was in the undertaker place and in, in, a, in a refrigerated room in a, in a drawer already. In a, they put him in a drawer and push him in the wall like this. They go to the hospital and they said, well, his body's already been taken over to the coroner's office over the place. So they, took, they went over there. And all the five men from the church just walked in in agreement you, know, you, 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 want, you want to know why God comes and does something? It's because you make up your mind that your faith is not going to work part-time. They made up their mind. They made up their mind before they went in there, all of them. We're going to pray until God comes. Do you fellows understand that? See, most of you sitting here don't know anything about that kind of faith. You don't even know anything about what I'm talking about. We're going to pray until God comes. We can't make God do anything. We're just going to pray until God comes. And we're just going to claim it. So they just walk in, go over to the drawer. His name is right here. His daddy said, let's get his body out. They pulled the drawer open, got the little boy's body out, took it over and laid it on a cot there. 
all five men of the church got around the cot and they began to pray. Ask God to touch the boy and bring it back to life again. The father let the God know, I want my son. And you're the same God now as you are in the Bible. Jesus, you never attended a funeral in the Bible, and I don't intend for you to attend one today. You've never changed. The Bible says, what I do for one, I'll do for the other. And they prayed. This is where the American church would fail because they don't know anything about it. If you get too far out, the churches in America, if you get too far out of teaching faith, they want to make fun of you. That's the reason they're so sick. If you will teach on prosperity, they make fun of you. Well, I don't know about you know. And you know. And always remember the guy that says that he couldn't buy himself out of a paper bag. And he never will be able to either. If you don't want to learn what God says in the Bible about anything, you've gone as far as you can go with God. You better keep yourself open to what God says. Not what I say. God didn't call you to follow men. But you better keep yourself open to the Jesus there is in the Bible. Well, let me ask you a question. Did Jesus raise the dead in the Bible or didn't he? Did he heal people in the Bible or didn't he? So they got around, they prayed, and in the ninth hour, hours, yeah. In the ninth hour of prayer, just all of a sudden, just as cold as he ever was, in the ninth hour of prayer, all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, and always remember this, that's the way it happens with everything. All of a sudden, God approves of your approach to him, and he stamps it, granted. He approves of what you're doing. The little boy's body began to turn warm, and he sneezed and raised up and said, Daddy! Daddy, 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 Daddy! <laughs> Brother Noel, the next time we have a child to die, we're going to call you. Pray yourself, you old lazy thing. Don't call me. Pray yourself. Any, always remember this. Anything that I can get God to do, you can get God to do it. The gospel is not written for some people. You've got to be a half idiot to believe that. The gospel is not written for some people. God will hear you as much as you hear those men or me or anybody else. The gospel is free. And it's free for you. And it's free for the asking. You can have whatever you say. Go get, go get the rest of the kids and bring them in here. And a little old girl, she said it like she meant it. Amen. <laughs> you got to watch them short amens. They don't mean nothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And notice verse 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that, sh that she had, but was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his clothes, for she said, For she said, You better say something to God yourself if you want victory. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. All you have to do is work, work my faith. I shall go to church this morning, Sunday morning, and I shall go down front, and I shall kneel before God, and I shall turn my face toward him, and I shall say, Jesus, 
You are healing me now because it's free for the church. Healing is a gift of the Spirit to the church, and the Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus, thank you for healing me now. Faith is right now. It's the best way in the world to get your disease to disappear. Make up your own mind. And Brother Wayne gives all her call this morning. I'm going to flat get up out of my seat, and I'm going to go down and bow down before God, and I'm going to give this dumb thing over to him that's making me suffer and miserable, and I'm going to claim it for myself because Jesus is my healer. And all the way down front, say, Jesus is my healer, and the bolder you say it, the better God likes it. The bolder you say it, the better God likes it. Sometimes God don't listen to real weak, squeaky voices. <laughs> well, I know, Jesus, you can heal people. I know, Jesus, you can heal. Oh, brother. <laughs> God said, come before the throne of God with boldness Amen. and claim what's rightfully yours. Blessed be the name of Jesus. For she said, If I may touch his garments, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Glory to God forever. And she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You know why her faith made her whole? Because her faith had a voice. Faith has a voice. A voice of victory. Silent faith don't work. God watches your faith and listens for your faith. The Bible says that God watches your faith and he listens to your faith. To faith... Faith has two ingredients to make it a reality and to bring victory to you. Faith has a voice and faith has action. Everybody say, faith has a voice. Faith has a voice. And faith has action. Faith has action. And brings me victory. And brings me victory. Everybody say, faith, faith. without a voice without and without action, without action. is dead. It is totally dead. It's amazing what the Word of God will do when you have faith in it. Now, if you're about to leave, don't leave. There are just a few more minutes, then I'll let you leave because you need to hear this. It was something the Holy Ghost told me. And last night, he wanted me to minister to you tonight this about concerning your mouth. I was in Kentucky one time holding a seminar just like this in Dr. Parrish's church. Dr. Paris was raised as a doctor. He's the only human I ever met as a double doctor. Two doctor degrees. He's a double doctor. The way Dr. Parrish, he's a, a double doctor, a double Southern Baptist doctor. And the way, got, the way Dr. Parrish got into a full gospel movement, they come to town and put up a tent, Wayne. Dr. Parrish went and sat in a tent. Full gospel tent, if you please. He was just sitting there, minding his own business, wondering why great and mighty things was not, was not happening in his church. Most of them do, you know. Most of them love the Lord. Good men love the Lord, but live a life of wondering why God don't come every Sunday morning and do great things in the church and become why Jesus don't step out of the New Testament and cause the lame to walk and the blind to see. But he don't. He don't ever do it. Not there he don't. You understand that? Why don't he? Well, because of your planned doctrine services. 
Who plans them? Well, you're about to find out. Dr. Parrish was sitting in the full gospel tent. The thing that shook him up so bad he couldn't stand it. So he started praying and seeking the Lord. When he started seeking the Lord, he found out reality. God started manifesting himself to Dr. Parrish. In fact, he just taught at my Bible school two weeks ago. He comes down usually every year and teaches for a week at the Bible school. He likes to come and teach the Bible school students. He has the full gospel church now in Kentucky that's bigger than the town. There's more people come to his church than lives in the city. Can you believe that? They come from everywhere. We sit in the full gospel tent and the full gospel pastor, you know, these full gospel Pentecostal evangelists, if they're wild enough to get a tent and go from town to town, they're wild enough to do anything, cast out devils or whatever. Don't ever make a fun of full gospel tents. You see, sitting on the side of the road, stop and give them an offering. Stop and give them a 10, 20, 50 dollar bill, 100 dollars or something. Stop and give them a gift. You want God to bless you. Because God probably brought them there to get two or three people set free. And maybe more. But he was sitting there anyway, and there's a demon possessed boy. And that evangelist come down and begin to work with that demon possessed person. Come out of him in Jesus' name. So the demon possessed person jumped up. <laughs> Looked over to Dr. Parrish. The demon possessed, the demon possessed person looked over to Dr. Parrish and said, went, eh. said, I am, I am the spirit over Baptist doctrines, and I planned your service last Sunday. <laughs> That'll, that'll put wings on your doctor's degree. <laughs> Dr. Parrish told me, he said, I knew somebody planned it, it wasn't God. Because <laughs> nothing ever was happening to speak of, you know. Well, l a little bit, you know. You know how God is, he'll bless you all he can. Well, he will, he'll bless you all he can. He wants to bless you out of your socks, but he'll bless you all he can. He began to seek God. Went down to this town in Kentucky and told, I believe he said, 13 people by special invitation. And God said, stay here and build a church. So he stayed there and built a church. This was, must have been, oh, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. I went and held him a seminar. I've been there probably four or five times. I went and held him a seminar. I'd been there about two days. I think it's a three-day three seminar just like this. I'd been there, I believe it was two nights. And one morning where I was staying, my phone rang, and I said, hello. Dr. Parrish's wife, she said, Brother Norville, she said, did you have a good night? I said, yes, I did. She said, uh, Dr. Parrish would like to speak to you for a minute. And she told me a little bit about it, you know. She said, we have a young man at the church, Brother Norville, from our church. Uh, he's supposed to have been dead last night. He's in intensive care over in the hospital. And he's supposed to have been dead the last three nights, but last night they said the doctor said he'd just stop breathing any time because he only breathes up once in a while. He's a real young fellow, about 21 years old, and said, me and, doctor, me and, me and the doctor got to, got, to, got to talk at this winter breakfast table. And Brother Norval, I just said to the doctor, I said, you know, honey, uh, the way Brother Norval teaches the Bible, said he might be able to help that boy. I called the hospital this morning. He didn't die last night. He was supposed to di be die last night, though. But said, he's still breathing every once in a while. And I think the doctor wants to talk to you. I said, well, okay, I'll help him if I can. So Dr. Parrish got on the phone. He says, Brother Norval, he expounded a little bit up on it. He said, would you be willing, if I come over and pick you up to go over to the hospital with me and pray for this boy? He said, we just... Sit and listen, you teach the Bible, you know, every night. And he just, you know, the Holy Ghost might possibly use you to help that boy. I said, well, I don't know if you will or not, but I said, you know, he could. I said, I'll be willing to go pray for him if you want to. We'll go, we'll go lay hands on him and agree. He said, all right, I'll pick you up. 
So we picked it up. We went up at the intensive care department. Right outside the intensive care door, there was some booths out there. And they had them against the wall and tables like things, you know. And, and so you, people sitting around at the tables. We got off the elevator. Dr. Pass says, now those people sitting over there, that's his mother and father, some of his brothers and sisters. And all of, all of them sitting over like this. Been sitting there all night long. Sad, lonely looking. I lost a brother at 19 years old. I know exactly how they felt. It's a sad, lonely time to watch your own brother die at 19, 2 o'clock in the morning. I watched mine take his last breath. It's a sad, lonely time in your life. So we, Dr. Parrish spoke to the family and said, I'm going to go in here. This is Brother Norville Hayes is holding a meeting at our church. I thought I'd see if the nurse would let us pray for him. Okay, doctor, thank you for coming. I don't know if she'll let you in or not. So he went to the door and he pushed this little button or something, you know, and the nurse, special nurse came to the door over the intensive care department. He said, I'm Dr. Parrish. I'm told his name. I'm his pastor. This is Brother Norval Hayes that's holding a seminar at our church. And I brought him over here and we just wanted to say a little prayer for him. He said, she says, well, I'm not supposed to let nobody in except his father. She said, now his wife stays in there all the time, beside of his bed. But I'm not supposed to let anybody in except his father and mother. Now listen to this. He is so bad that his brothers and sisters can't even come in the room. His father and mother can only stay two minutes at a time. I have to time them, two minutes. They come in, look at him. He's just breathing every once in a while. The doctors told us yesterday that last night would be the last night, that he just, he's only breathing every once in a while. And he just stopped breathing, and that'll be it. He said, well, since I'm his pastor, and we have a special speaker at our church, we just want to come and say a prayer for him. She, he said, couldn't, couldn't you let us in just to say a prayer for him? She says, okay, since you're his pastor, I'll let you in, I'll let you in Dr. Parrish. She knew him. She said, I'll let you in for two minutes. I, I, I'll get this favor for two minutes. You only got two minutes. I got strict orders from the doctor. Only two minutes. He said, okay. So we went on in. Now, I'd never seen a human being like that in my life. Did you ever see a human being just breathing every once in a while? I, that's strange, man, to see a human being breathe every once in a while. I mean, he didn't, of course, now he, he was totally gone, you know. His little wife was sitting there, looked like she's about 19, 20 years old, with her head down like this, you know. Just sitting there, waiting for the last breath. And he was there, they had this stuff on him. He'd breathe like this. When he would inhale, he'd go... <clears throat> wait and wait and you'd wait and wait and wait a little while then his lips would come in flirt and he'd go then you'd think that's the last one then he'd go Dr. Parrish said, let's just pray. He said, you get up here, to, up here to the end of the wall. I'll stand here at the foot of the bed. You get up here, pray. <laughs> so we reached, reached out and touched him gently. He just said a sweet little prayer for about a minute or so, you know, just a prayer of agreement. Jesus, name for the Holy Spirit to help him. 
the Bible said, listen closely, the Bible said if two or more touching anything, asking, agreeing, it shall be done. Now listen closely. All depends on what kind of prayer you pray. We, we touched him and agreed and asked the Father in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit would help him. And his healing power go through him. And the Holy Spirit would help him. Well, the Lord says, if you do that, it shall be done. But I think many people die because people are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. They don't, they don't even know what he says. I know I've missed God a lot of times. I haven't missed him every time, but I've missed him a lot of times. The Lord tried to get me to get the McDonald franchise 25 years ago in my hometown. And I didn't do it. Now I had a buddy that got it in his hometown. He had to borrow the money to get the first McDonald franchise. It cost $35,000 in those days for the building equipment and all. $35,000. And my buddy borrowed the money and put up one McDonald's. And now then he owns 16 McDonald's. Every, every story he's got does over a million dollars worth a year except one. Every time I pass McDonald's in my hometown, I say, Norval Hayes, big dummy. <laughs> but if you don't pick up at the time the Lord wants you to do something, you miss the Lord. See, I mean, knowing me, I've, I've been in the restaurant. I've, had, I've, I've invested money in restaurants. I've got two now. And I've had one for 25 years. And I could have had, knowing me, I could have had 20 McDonald's by now. And my buddy told me, he says, Norval, out of my 16 McDonald's, he said, you, you cannot believe, he, he, he lives in the governor's mansion. He, he, he just bought the thing. He's owned it for several years. He bought the governor's mansion. And he said, I make so much money, I have no earthly idea what to do with it. Can you imagine owning 16 McDonald's? One McDonald's will make you a millionaire just in a couple of three years. Two or three years, two or three or four years, it'll make you a millionaire. 16 of them? You gotta be kidding. He said, I don't even know what to do with all the money. I said, well, God will show you. He has a whole herd of lawyers and advisors and stuff every day. They work in the office to tell him what to do with his money. And full-time accountants try to figure out what to do with all this money. That's a good problem to have when you're spirit-filled. Him and his wife, spirit-filled, never lost the victory either, brother. I mean, they're still spirit-filled, just as sweet as they can be. Just as sweet as they can be. I've missed God a lot of times in my life, but I haven't missed him every time. I've hit part of the time. This time I hit. Not only in finance, but I hit in his, this boy's behind. We got through praying for him. Dr. Parrish walked out. We walked out very quietly and gently. Walked out like this. Dr. Parrish said, well, go down. I said, okay. And he walked out, turned, turned right at the foot of the bed. And he's already to down, to down towards the foot. And the open door's right over there. And so I'm walking out like this right here. And his wife sitting here, you know. And said, I got to the foot of the bed like this. I got to the foot of the bed. And the Spirit of God that lives in my belly said to me, just as plain as I'm talking to you, said to me just as sweetly and kindly, listen closely. He said, Mark 11, 23. Now, I want you and your son to listen to this. Listen real close. The Holy Spirit said to me just as plain, said, Mark eleven twenty three would heal him if it was obeyed. Amen. Now write that down, try it on for size. Amen. Mark eleven twenty three would heal him. If it was obeyed, the Bible never helps you 15 cents worth of nothing until it's obeyed.
And you know, all of heaven's blessing you can never need or stand on this earth that's promised you in the Bible. And if you obey it, you get it. I mean, right now. But if you don't obey it, then you can do your own thing. Now, always remember this. God does not turn against you because you fail to obey his word. He does not turn against you because you fail to obey his word. He just don't give it to you. You understand that? But Jesus loves you if you never obey James 5, 14, 15. If you don't ever look at a bottle of oil the rest of your life, Jesus loves you. But if you would anoint somebody with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus and say with your mouth when you do it, according to James 5, 14 and 15, I anoint my brother with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus and I want to thank you, Lord, for your healing power, raising him up off of this deathbed and making him ever withhold in Jesus' name. And it says the elders of the church, more than one, agree, do that. But you have to understand the person needs to believe it themselves. That's the reason God says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. The sick's supposed to call, not somebody for you. You start to for somebody. Brother Noah, well, would you come over and pray for so and so? I says, What about them calling? Do they want me to come? Well, I think they do. I said, No, I'm not coming. No, uh uh. Forget that. You can't invade somebody's home with the gospel. You might as well forget it. It won't work for you. It just don't work. If they'll believe themselves, it'll work. If they'll believe themselves. And thank God sometimes you, you might get there and start giving them a sales talk and preaching the gospel to them for a long time, get them to believe it. And sometimes you get them built up and lay hands on them in Jesus' name and God perform a miracle for them right then. Amen. Praise Every case is different, you know what I mean? And so when the Lord said that to me, now listen to what he said. Mark eleven twenty three would heal him now, he don't even have one chance in 10 million to live. Not even one chance in 10 million. You know, if he had a one chance in 10 million, it'd be a little bit. But he don't even have one chance in 10 million to live. Not one chance. How in the world do you get a person like that healed? Well, I can guarantee you right now, you don't know. And I don't either. But I knew, and listen closely, this is what helps you by knowing some scriptures. I don't know all the scriptures, but I know some of them. I knew the contents of that verse and exactly what was in there. And that verse plainly says, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, turn there. Turn to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Yeah. I know what it says. Mark eleven twenty three. That verse of scripture says this, and as Jesus talking to you. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done for him. In other words, <laughs> those things that you say, if you believe that those things that you say shall come to pass, look what it says. If you believe that those things, everybody say things. things. Now listen closely, church. That's where it's at. Things covered him. The boy on the deathbed. Because it says things. Those things that you say, not think, hope, or believe. It says right there, if you believe that those things that you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. You may have a bunch of bills you can't pay. Get to this altar right now. Satan, take your hand off of my money. You do it. Not me for you. You do it. You do it. If you need to be healed in your body, Jesus is healing me now. The Lord is healing me now. Confess your healing. You confess it. You confess it. Jesus said you can have whatever you say. You can have whatever you say. 
Jesus said you could have whatever you say. Is your children lost out there? Don't let your children go to hell. Come up here and say, my children will never go to hell. My brother's delivered right now. My children will never go to hell. Jesus is saving my children. Jesus is healing me now. The Lord God Almighty is healing me now. The Lord God Almighty is healing me now. The Lord God Almighty is healing me now. Lord God Almighty is healing me now. I say that I am healed and not sick. I say I am well and not sick. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. I am well. I am healthy. I am healthy. I'm not sick. I have a right to call those things that be not as though they were. You belong to God, honey. Speak it out, little darling. That's right. Tell God what you want. Claim it for yourself. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Jesus is healing me. Jesus is healing me now. That's right. She'll live and not die. The Lord is healing her now. I will live and not die. The Lord is healing me now. I will live and not die. The Lord God is healing me now. I will live and not die. The Lord is healing me now. I will pay my bills. The money will come in for me to pay my bills. God will send me the money to pay my bills. God will send me the money to pay my bills. I will live and not die. No disease will kill me. Cancer, you can't kill me. You're a liar. Cancer, you can't kill me. The Lord God is healing me. Jesus is healing me now. The Lord Jesus is healing me now. The Lord Jesus is healing me now. The Lord Jesus is healing me now. Right now. Right now. Right Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on over here. Y'all come up here. Come confess in victory. Open up your mouth and say something. Open up your mouth and say something. Open up your mouth and say something. Say what you mean. Say victory. Say victory. Speak life upon yourself. Speak life upon yourself. Speak life upon yourself. Speak life upon yourself. Speak victory into your life. Speak life upon yourself. Speak life upon yourself. Speak life upon yourself. Speak it on yourself. Victory. Say words of victory. Get all the doubt out of you. Remove all the doubt out of you. Remove all the doubt out of you. Speak victory in Jesus' name. Victory. Victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Victory. Victory. Victory in Jesus' name. Victory. Victory. Victory in Jesus' name. Total victory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Victory. Speak victory in Jesus' name. 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 Speak it. Speak it yourself. Speak it yourself. Speak it. Huh? Speak it. That's right. Speak it, honey. Speak it. Continually all the time. Continually speak it all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Speak victory yourself. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. To order more tapes, write to Norval Hayes Ministries, P.O. Box 1379, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311. God bless you, and thank you for watching.